Hi everybody, Steve Carson with Penn Fishing Tackle on the searcher. We're in the middle of another record-breaking, fantastic bluefin tuna season. Hopefully the second half of the year is just gonna be just as good, maybe better. And uh, certainly looking that way. And we wanna make sure that you're rigged up the right way and looking at your emails and your DMs and your PMs, people calling me in the middle of the night and leaving phone messages and obviously lots of the questions under your tackle tip thursday videos is what about big tuna tackle how do i catch a big tuna now what's big okay i i can remember not all that long ago that if we caught a 50 pound bluefin tuna it was the biggest one we had caught for the year and maybe our lives now it's like oh you got a small one so we're a little bit jaded, we're a little bit spoiled. Let's try not to be that, let's be appreciative of what we have, but let's also be ready for what's out there in the water because it is incredible. And uh, think of fishing rods like golf clubs. Each one does a fairly specific job and uh, there'll be a little bit of bleed over on one side or another, but you know what, doesn't matter how good your putter is when you need a driver for all you golfers out there. If you're not a golfer, <laughs> I'm gonna get more fishing specific. But the three rigs that you wanna have for big tuna, we're gonna go upward from the lightest one, and that is your 80 pound rig. Uh, could be a 60 pound rig if the fish are not running too big. 60 pound test does cast a little easier than 80. But uh, uh, this is a pen, fathom, 40 narrow, two speed. All these reels are two speed, very, very important. A single speed reel just, you know what? I, I love them, they are not gonna work for this. So a two speed pen, fathom 40 narrow the 60 narrow is also very good for this fill it up most of the way with 80 pound test braid and um, then you're going to put you can't really see it you just have to trust me that underneath about 25 yards because this is my personal one 25 yards of, of uh, 80 pound test monofilament i checked with mike just before we did this video and he said about a boat length of top shot so uh the boat's about 95 feet long so that's about 33 yards of top shot, a little bit more than I have on there. So something between 25 and 50 yards is gonna be right. That gives you a, a, a lot more abrasion resistance, better casting ability, a little bit of stretch, and most important when you're in a tangle uh, with somebody else that also has a big bluefin on, it's a lot easier for the crew to, uh, to get you untangled with the monofilament. So this rig is very good for tuna from you know, those small 50 to 75 pounders on up to about 150 pounds. It actually handles them pretty darn well. And again, it wasn't that long ago that 150 pound local tuna basically did not exist. So to, to, to say that this is your light rig for big tuna is pretty amazing these days, but it really is a key part of your arsenal. And uh, when, when the tuna are literally running about 100 pounds, uh, it's a lot lighter than some of the stuff that we're looking we're going to look at here in a minute So it's a little bit more pleasant to fish with on a long long day So that's your rig if you if you know what my five rigs don't leave the dock without them list is and you may have seen me and art uh, discuss that this is uh, Rig number four Okay, that's your 80 pound rig and that will handle I usually use it with jigs from about 170 to about 220 grams. We've done other videos on jigs, but uh, kind of that middle size and uh, down to about 280, uh, maybe 300 feet at the most that you can really get with, the, with that size of jig. So very popular rig. Uh, also good if you go on the longer trips on the searcher, good for yo-yoing for yellowtail, throwing wahoo bombs for wahoo, just a great all around rig for fishing on the searcher. Pen Fathom 40 narrow, 80 pound top shot. Now, I know what you're thinking. Steve, you said 150 pound tuna. I wanna catch a bigger one. I wanna catch a lot bigger one. And you know what? There's a lot bigger ones out there. Um, without going too far, and remembering that a, a lot of our anglers out there are like me, are more mature, or they may have uh, uh, medical issues, or maybe you just work behind a desk and you don't really have the ability to, you know, to lift weights and stuff in the, in the off season, um, the pen, International, I'm gonna kind of point this at the camera, 16 VISX filled with 100 pound test braid. 
And on this, it's a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, it's a lot shorter top shot. It's only about a 10 yard top shot uh, of 100 pound test monofilament, partially because I'm gonna be fishing a lot deeper and the braid does sink better. And I just need more yardage because I'm gonna hook a bigger fish on this and he's gonna run a lot longer. But um, also, and I should have mentioned on that other, on that other rig, um, these rods are not your short five foot two inch rods that we had in the 1980s. This is a seven foot rod. Sometimes I'll even use a seven foot six inch or longer rod. And you always want on any rod, middle of the line rating. You don't really want to fish the high end of the line rating. You don't want to really want to fish the low end of the line rating. Uh, to get the money that you spent on a, on a good quality rod, you want to be somewhat in the middle of the line rating. So in this case, it's an 80 to 130 pound rod. That 100 pound test is in the middle there. It's going gonna, it's gonna to perform the best. Uh, and that, that 16 VISX, without looking up the weights, I believe it's 36 ounces. Uh, considering how much power this reel has, and there's been a number of 300 pound tuna caught on, on these. And in fact, this exact one has caught a 313 pounder. Ask me how I know that. But um, uh, sometimes, you know, you get out there and all the fish, I hope you're out on that particular day, all the fish are 250 pounds and up. Or you know what, you're just young, you're strong, you're saying, Steve, sit down, get your rocking chair. I want something heavier. Okay. Pan International 20 VISX. I'll try to show this to the camera. Okay, now we said that that, that International 16 was 36 ounces. Not really very heavy for a powerful reel. Now you're up to 53 ounces here. Okay, so kind of a jump but you got a tremendous increase in the line capacity. I'm gonna show them next to each other. Hard to tell if you don't really look at them next to each other. Pretty large increase in line capacity. Uh, pretty substantial increase in the beef of the frame. Bigger handle, bigger drag material. Um, and if you're persistent enough, or young and strong enough, or just determined enough, that you want to make sure that no matter how big of a tuna you hook, if you hook that 375 pounder, you want to be able to land him. By the way, it'd probably take all the deckhands on the searcher to bring that 375 pounder into the boat, but uh, I hope that that's you. That 20 VISX with 100 or even 130 pound test braid uh, is the way to go. And now, remember we said the other one was an 80 to 130 rod. Now we're on an 80 to 150 rod, even heavier. And uh, again, that allows our line to be in the middle. Now, I know what you're thinking. How do I fight one of those gigantic tuna? Maybe you are like me and you're in the mature class of anglers, or maybe you're a five foot tall lady, or maybe you wanna bring your, you know, your teenage uh, son or daughter out on the searcher for you, with you. By the way, the searcher is a great boat. If you wanna bring uh, one of your kids or a relative or anybody that's not that experienced with fishing and you wanna show them an unbelievably awesome trip, Searcher is the boat to do it on. But what about you fighting a giant tuna? How do you do that? Now uh, there's a technique called using the rail. And it's a, there's a lot more to it that we can really go over in a couple of minutes here, but I'm gonna show you the basics. Number one is, assuming that you're right-handed, you're gonna tuck the rod up under your left armpit, okay? And you're gonna lay the rod down if the fish is down below you, you're gonna literally lay the rod on the rail. Make sure you're using a rod with a long foregrip and you're literally gonna lay the rod on the rail. Um, put it under your left armpit. I know there's a, there's a natural motion to your right armpit. Trust me, go to for your left. And then to prevent it from twisting back and forth, you may put your hand on top of the reel like this. You may put it on the side of the reel like this to prevent it from twisting because there's gonna be a very strong twisting motion um, and again you're going to be in low gear and you're going to fight the fish sometimes you're going to go use your entire body weight to lift up wind down entire body weight to lift up wind down um, the searchers uh, the height of the searchers rail varies depending on where you are in the boat obviously people are different heights you're going to maybe want to work out um, where you want to stand and how you want to stand uh, and of course the crew of the searcher will help you through every step of the way. Sometimes when the fish are way out, you may find it more, uh, more relaxing if that's the right word 
to get down on one knee and lay the rod on the rail this way and fight with the fish out there. Um, again, I don't want to oversimplify it because there's going to be a tremendous amount of stress on you, but uh, if you do that right, you're going to be able to land the biggest tuna of your life. Big tuna on the searcher, we'll see you out there.